And I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to start with verse uh, 14. You know, a lot of times you hear of, uh, I know there's been several churches that, that they split. You know, there's a lot of them that split over something small, small dis you know disagreements that they have in the church. And then they'll have this group of people go over and they'll start holding a church. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us we're to be as one body. You know, we're all, we're to work together. You know, when you have a disagreement, I think there's a lot of times there's ways that people can work through these disagreements. And, uh, but I mean, I guess some cases, there are cases where they can't work out the disagreements. But, you know, the Bible tells us we are to be as one body. And uh, it's uh, it's difficult when you go into a church and you, if you've ever been into a church and you see, you see two people arguing, you know, it's kind of difficult to go in and you see two Christians arguing with each other. And, uh, you know, it, it's difficult because that, that is a bad influence that you're leaving on somebody. You know, that that's uh that's something that could deter somebody from coming i'm going to start with verse 14 it says the for the body is not one member but many if the foot shall say because i am not the hand i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body and if the ear shall say because i am not an eye i am not of the body is that therefore not of the body? It's mistaken. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. It's right, it's and if they were all one member, where were the body? Amen. And now... Are there many members yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need for thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for thee. God bless God. <coughs> Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. They're special. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable Upon these we bestow more abundant honor. So and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Show a little love. That there should be no schism in the body, <clears throat> but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether Jesus. one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts that yet show I unto you a more excellent way. You know, we are all parts of the body. <clears throat> and uh you know in verse 22 through 25 it talks about god uses the less honorable or a lot of times god chooses the weaker people to do great things you know <clears throat> when you take a lot of times if you notice a lot of preachers or teachers myself included and Paul Paul included, because I've heard him come up here and talk about it, how about how shy he was when he was a young boy. 
And, uh, you know, God takes those that are shy and a lot of times he'll put them in positions where he's got to, where they got to stand in front of people and talk, you know? So he takes your weaknesses and turns them into your strengths. And, uh, so many times people, they, you know, they think that, uh, you know, I have trouble getting in front of people and talking, you know, but here I am up here and, uh, You know, that's what God can take somebody that is very easily for them to get up and talk in front of people, but it's not as good of a testimony. You know, it, it doesn't show as much movement because that person, you know, somebody that goes out there and, and is constantly standing up in front of people and talking and, you know, always wants to be the center of attention, I guess. You take somebody that wants to be a center of attention and you, you put them behind the pulpit and they don't, I'm not saying they don't change, but I'm saying that they, uh, they can't see as much power, physically power of God movement, you know, at that point, God wants to show his power. And in, uh, second Corinthians chapter four. In verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know, God takes your weakness and turns them into your strength because he wants to show that it's not us. It's him. God is he wants us to understand that it's not our power that he allows us to do that. things, but it's the power that God gives us to do things. You know, it, it's not our abilities. It's our, it's God giving us the abilities, not the abilities that we already have, but the abilities that God brings out in us. Thank you, Heavenly And uh, another thing I got to thinking about, you know, if you embrace your weaknesses, the things that you know you're not good at, the things that, that you seem to be weaker at, God, it forces you to allow God to move. You know, you begin to depend on God more to help you through these things. When you say, say, if I have trouble speaking, and every time Papa asked me to come up here and speak, I said, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. You know, I'm not depending upon God to get me through this because I'm not doing it. You know, when you embrace your weaknesses and you know what your weaknesses are, then you depend upon God to get you up here, to get you through this. You know, and it makes you closer to God and it allows you to grow. You know that you know God and it lets God's power come through. It allows God to show his power, how he can take a person's weaknesses and turn them into strengths. And I'm going to go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11. In verse 32, it says, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong waxed did. valiant in fight turned to flight the armies of the aliens Whooped them. 
And it says right here, he takes the weaknesses and makes them strong. You know, so many times people, they they don't get up and do things because they feel that that's, that's where they're weakest at. You know, but that's what God wants. God wants to take your weaknesses and to make you strong with them. He wants to take the things that you're insecure about and give you security with. He wants you. He wants to take the things that you're afraid of doing and remove that fear to allow you to do it. You mean God's a way maker? <coughs> and uh, like I said, he takes your weaknesses and makes you strong with them. Bless God. But you have to allow him to. You have to seek these things you have to allow him to use your weaknesses if you just sit back and say you know i i'm too scared to get up and do that i'm just not going to do it who's telling you that you know you're not, not you don't have you you're not having faith that god is going to make is going to allow you to do this back in first corinthians chapter 12 in verse 31 It says, but covet earnestly the best gifts, oh, what are they? and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. We should always seek for the gifts that God has for us. We should always continue to push for those things. Because, you know, God has all these gifts that he's going to give us. But if you don't work towards them, you'll never reach them. You'll never receive them. You know, um, if I don't work towards being able to speak in front of people, then I won't have the gift that God has given me. If somebody that wants to play music... God can give people the gift of music, but if they don't get up there and play the guitar or play the piano or play the drums, if they don't get up here and do it, then they're never going to receive the gift they're because not. they're not seeking it. Amen. You know, and even though we have all these gifts that God knows that he's going to give to us, Amen. God knows what gifts he's going to give me. He knows what gifts he's going to give you. Know, you. It's, it's said in order. We still have to seek them. Amen. You know, and that's where... When you talk about free will, you know, you have free will to reject every gift that God tries to give to you. Oh, just kick it in the dirt. I don't want to be one of the people that rejects God's no, gifts, but yeah. there are people out there that do. Yeah, you know, there are Lord. people out there that because of their weaknesses that they decide, I can't do this. Pray for them that they don't, they don't receive. They don't look at the verse, I can do all things through Christ who Strength strengthens me. You know, without Christ, we can't do anything. No. He is the one who gives us the strength. He is the one who gives us the strength to get up every day. He's the one who gives us the strength to get up here and speak. He's the one that gives the piano player the strength to play the piano. He's the one that gives us the strength to make it from day to day. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And the last set of verses I'm going to read. I'm going to go to uh, Philippians. Chapter 2. <coughs> Praise God for everyone. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, about Jesus. which has also was also in Jesus Christ. You know, and th these five verses go back 
to what I started with, being of one body. Amen. We all have a job to do. Yes. You know, sometimes um, like I said, sometimes I've seen lots of churches split because of disagreements. <clears throat> and uh, I believe there was one right here in Haiti that, that split. And uh, it's it's tough to see when you see Christians fighting amongst each other because they're supposed to be working together. No matter what you believe, your belief should be to save souls. No matter what your disagreement with somebody should be, we should all work together to get as many people to heaven as what we can. You know, there there's so many people that they'll get out in public and they'll just start arguing with each other, you know, over something that doesn't that's not really even that important, you know. And then you have all these other people that are seeing them and seeing this big scene that they've caused out in this public place. And then when you get done fighting with that person, you go up to somebody and say, hey, we're having church on Sunday morning. Why don't, why don't you come down there and join us? Yeah, give me a big hug. That was a story you know, uh, give me a big hug. I it'd be difficult. It'd be real difficult to go to church with somebody that you just seen have a big knockdown drag out with somebody right there in the middle of everywhere. And uh, pray for me. You know, we have to work together. You know, there's different denominations and people believe differently. But the one thing that the majority of the denominations believe is that we've got to say we've got to get as many people in church and help get their souls saved as what we can. You know, and that's the one thing that we should all work together for. For the glory of our Lord. Everybody has their own task to perform, and they all work together in one body. You know, it's just like. Having your foot cut off makes it difficult to walk with one with only one foot. And that's the same way with everybody in the church. Yes. If you lose a piano player, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get up here we and sing. No one left out. If you don't have anybody to play we instruments, it would make it real difficult to get up here and yes. sing. You know, you need everybody. It takes the entire body to make up the church. And, uh, It's not, <clears throat> people's jobs aren't less important than others. They're all important. Amen. And I know I've said that before, but I hear so many times, I hear people saying, you know, I don't contribute anything, you know. And Just come <clears throat> contributing. somebody, you know, somebody that sits back there and Good sings music. during the choir songs and claps That's their right. hands, they may sit back there and say, well, I really don't make a contribution. Nobody's going to miss me if I don't go to church. But you know that person's important. Amen. You know every person is important. And we'll close with that. <clears throat> Thank you,